The first ratio which we are going to calculate is a return on capital employed. This ratio has two parts, return and capital employed. By return, we normally mean profit and capital implied is the money which is invested to generate that profit. There are two types of capital implied in the business, long-term capital and working capital. Long-term capital comes from two sources. One is shareholders' money, owners' money, and the second is debt, loans, borrowings. With this long-term capital, what we do, or long-term capital employed, what we do, we establish our business and we invest that money into the assets which will create products, which will create services, and hence we will sell those and then we will make profit out of it. So this ratio assesses how much money we invested in our assets and how much return they are creating. The other type of the capital is called working capital, which is used to run uh, our business on a daily basis, pay for wages and bills, etc. And usually that money comes from short-term loans, our bank overdraft, or the spare money which we generate during our sales and purchasing cycle. So if this money does not come usually from, and ideally, should not come from our long-term capital. Long-term capital should only be invested in the long-term asset, long-term asset. So what we do, we assess different companies, uh, one company with another, that if they invest 100 pound in their long-term assets, how much return they're creating in comparison to the other companies, which help us to understand which company is using their capital implied better. The process of ratios requires us to look at the formula, understand which figures needed for that formula, locating those figures from the financial statements, and then using those in the formula. And that's what we will do in this class. Rocky, return on capital implied. We need operating profit, a figure which can be found in income statement, share capital and reserves, and the long-term loans can be found in the balance sheet. So let's go and look for operating profit. This figure is given clearly in the income statement, 156.5 and 253.2. That's my operating profit. It is also called profit before interest and tax. So your company may use that wording for this bit. The second bit is share capital and reserves. So that will be found in balance sheet, our statement of financial position. The very last segment or area of balance sheet is equity area. If you read the first line, it says share capital. And then the rest of these things are all called reserves. So when it says share capital and reserves, that means equity. We need to pick the total equity figure and place it in our formula. The next is long-term loans, which can be found in the balance sheet. So non-current liabilities, long-term mean non-current, okay? So not all non-current liabilities are loans. You need to find which one is loan. And if you go through this, you can see borrowings and other financial liabilities. That's the figure which we are looking for. So we'll copy this onto our workings. Let's take a simple example. I take a loan from the bank for five years. I need to pay it within five years. Five years loan, 50,000 pounds. So when I take the loan, I record the transaction as non-current liability. That's my loan, that's my borrowings. But when I present this information in my financial statements, I am required to segregate the part which is to be paid within the next 12 months. 
and the one which will be paid after those 12 months. Because my loan is for five years, within as soon as I take a loan, in the next 12 months, I have to pay back 10,000 pounds back to the bank. So when I present that loan in my financial statements, I will present 40,000 as non-current, long-term, and 10,000 as my current loan, current liability. But we need to understand that what type of capital employed is that? And at the start, I explained the purpose of the long-term capital employed. It is invested in the business assets. That 50,000, the essence is that that was a capital employed long-term. So it should be included in the calculation. Otherwise, if you re remove it, our Rocky will be higher, artificially higher, incorrectly higher. So that's why. May not many companies has this issue, but some still has because it's a legit issue. Sometimes what happens, the, ro the, the loans which company takes, they're not paid back. They take a loan for 10 years, so they will have to repay at the end of that 10 per year. But what happens at the end of 10 years, that loan is gets rolled back. So, so keep the money forever. So this issue, it doesn't apply to most of the companies, but then some companies do have this issue. So what we do, we pick up this figure as well and add it. 125.6 and 513, 518. So this is the complicated area. For some companies, there are no loans. I think Burberry is an example. They don't have any borrowings, no loans. So they will have simply uh, operating profit divided by equity, job done. And that ratio is also called a return on equity rather than Rocky. But if they don't have borrowings, then Rocky and Ro uh, Roy are the, are the same things. Okay? So sometimes it will be simpler, sometimes it will be a bit more complicated. Is it good or bad? No idea, because we have no comparison. So there are two types of comparison could be done in ratio analysis. One, with the company's own historical data, which is called horizontal analysis, and the compa competitor's data, which is called comparative analysis. So for your coursework, you should do both. You're explaining Rocky. First thing, steal the definition from one of the book, accounting book, okay? So to do that, grab three, four books from the library, go down the ratio analysis chapter, write down those books word to word, reference them properly, insert them in your workbook. That's your start. That one thing you can do without any thinking. Simply copy and paste. Then what you need to do, you need to explain your results. Simply state that the Rocky has increased or decreased from 2020 to 2022 by this much. That's another sentence. So that's two sentences. Then what you need to do, tell me that increase or decrease is a good thing or a bad thing. So for profitability ratios, when the results increase, that means good thing. So you tell, you tell me that uh, the Rocky has uh, increased, which means the performance of the company in this area has improved, or if it's consistent. Uh, it has decreased. These three things you state, you will pass the course well, or at least the financial fin uh, analysis part. To do more, to get more marks, then you will ha compare the results with the competitor's data 
and uh, you will find out the uh, reason for a decline and then you will link it with what is happening now seven features of racial analysis there's a video on that there's article i think there are articles as well which you can read the next ratio is gross profit ratio we need gross profit and turnover these two figures should be in the income statement so if you go to the income statement we should be able to find both of these things in there however you can see that although turnover is there gross profit is not there so this is these kind of little hiccups little complications you will encounter when you are calculating the ratios for your own company look in look into the uh, solution okay and the solution is there nodes 2 and 3 so go to the nodes that's why we need the nodes so if you go to the nodes 2 and 3 if you look at the segmental information it gives us all the breakdown of how the uh, uh, revenues were generated what were the different segments areas blah 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 but it does which is the useful information but it does not give us gross profit so we'll move on to note 3 and you can see that in note 3 we have more detail about the company's income statement given we have gross profit there we have uh, revenues there so I'll pick the figures from here 4047.3 and 4087.8 divided by turnover our revenue 10698.2 and 10622 38% is a big figure so decimal places not really needed This means when MNS sells goods for 100 pound, their GP gross profit is 38 pound, which means they buy something for 62 pound and sell it for 100 pounds. This margin, this gross margin or gross profit ratio tells us about, it's very interesting ratio, it tells us uh, many things about that. But in this case, the first thing we learn that the gross profit ratio is stable. It's pretty good without looking at the comparison. It, it, it looks good as well. If you, if you look at Tesco, Sainsbury and Astas, you're looking at about 28-29%. Uh, uh, but if you look at Burberry, Ted Baker, you're looking at around 60-70%. So it also tells us about the brand value as well. How much a brand can have uh, can add value. Simply buying stuff and then selling, simply putting your logo on it, that's your brand value basically. So if you're comparing it with other, uh, other, pro other, other businesses in the same sector, you can assess the relative brand value as well. In this case, the, the GP is stable. Uh, a bit longer data would help us to assess this uh, a bit more detailed. We, now, if the gross profit ratio is stable, that means the core of the business is good, is, is unaffected. And the core is that MNS buys products from uh, suppliers, sells us to the customers. If this ratio is changing, for example, and, and this will be changing, for example, for businesses with, which are still growing, still developing. For example, Tesla, their GP margin is increasing because they are increasing their production and sales. When they increase their production, they're getting economies of scale, which means they're buying their raw material cheaper, which increases the gap between the sales and the cost of the sales value. Then their supply chain is getting more efficient which has to reduce the cost of the raw material and the manufacturing processes are also getting better so we, we have known that the ramp ups uh, in, in, in their different factories 
which is helping them to reduce the cost of production. So if a company is taken off, like Tesla, the GP margin would be increasing. But then a stage comes when GP margin be starts becoming stable. For example, and, and, and Apple was in, in the taken off position five years ago, but if you notice the last two, three years, they are, their margins are becoming more stable now. So this tells us about the company's life cycle as well. So when a product GP ratio becomes stable, then that's the point where um, uh, the company has saturated its market share. They are still a good company, but maybe they can't exploit the growth as much anymore. And, and the Coke was there like 100 of years ago. Coke stayed there for 100 of years, very stable uh, uh, GP. And like in the last 10 years, the GP has started declining because people are changing. Coke is not as good anymore as, <laughs> as it used to be. But, and same thing will happen to Apple eventually when, when we may not be using phone anymore. Yeah, don't go sad, yeah. We will have better alternatives maybe. Maybe Neuralink from Elon Musk would help us to communicate without any phones. And then comes the declining phase. If the GP is, is, is declining, if the margins are declining, uh, then the company maybe is in decline mode. Examples are the German uh, car manufacturers are generally uh, traditional car manufacturers, uh, Ford, Toyota, or Audi. Or, uh, their, gross margin, their margins are declining now. Net profit ratio. Profit before tax and turnover can be found in the income statement. So profit before tax given clearly 66.8 and 176.4. Turnover we have already used. Without looking at a comparison, this figure looks really low. 6.62 means that when M&S sells goods for 100 pounds, their profit before tax is only 62 pence. And in 2017, it was 1,066 pence, which is pretty low. And in this sector, in M&S sector, you should be expecting around 6% of PBT, profit before tax. For a sector like Tesco, Sainsbury, Esther, they are at around 3%. The reasons we have already discussed, M&S were going through a restructuring uh, in that area. Uh, they had to close their stores, uh, 50 stores they announced to close in 2016, which call, results in redundancy phase and you have to cancel your lease, so you have to pay fines on that and etc. There are so many other expenses which are related. So that's one of the reasons. But m and still going good. Not doing as great as it was doing 10, 12 years ago, but it's still surviving. Um, so uh, it will be interesting for you to see what happens afterwards. So, so, so far we have uh, Rocky, not so good. And uh, net profit, very bad. GP, stable. The comparative analysis could help us to understand this a bit more. The managers would try to increase these ratios by any means, by increasing, and, and the way would be to increase profits and, and, and the various ways of doing it. And some of the ways of increasing profits are not good for the company. So that's why it is important to assess the quality of profits, not just the profits, but the quality of profits. So let's calculate this first, and then I will explain what quality of profit means. We need two figures. 
One is net cash flows from operating activities. This, is, uh, this will come from statement of cash flow. We have not used that statement yet. So that's where we go there. Operating profit, we have already used. Statement of cash flow. And the third figure is this one. It may not be the third figure for your company, so you may have to go down a bit more, read a bit more of that. Operating profit is 156.5 up there. We have already used that figure. And 253.2. So 849.8 and 106.7. This means when MNS made a profit of 100 pound, they received 543 pound and 422 pound from that pool. The ideal for quality of profits is one. If you declare 100 pound profit, you should receive 100. Many companies don't do that. This ratio is important when assessing the profitability of a company because, as I said, management would do anything to increase their profits if their profits are only based on, if their bonuses are only based on the profitability of the business. But profit itself is not important. The quality of profit is also important. So to increase profits, management could increase sales by reducing prices or maybe uh, selling it to anybody on long-term credit, one-year credit, six months credit. People, customers with good credit history, bad credit history, they sell to anyone. So when they sell like this, obviously their profits are going to go up, Rocky is going to go up, GP is going to go up, and profit, net profit ratio is going to go up. But when you sell like this to anybody without, without checking the credit um, uh, rating and stuff like that, you are not going to receive that money when the time comes. So the profit, what is the quality of that profit? And that is, if it's one, that means quality of profit is good. If it's less than one, then the quality of profit is not so good. This one is good, two major reasons. One, for m &S. The operating profit were exceptionally low because of the restructuring cost. So this increase the difference. And secondly, for retailers, all of the retailers, this ratio is usually very high because they sell on cash. Tesco, Sainsbury, they will all have a very good quality of profit ratios because they sell on cash. They receive more cash than their profits. So that is going to be good. However, most of the businesses in this world happens on credit. When Coke sells their products to Tesco, they they, they sell it on credit, or all the other suppliers. Do you know, if you remember a long time ago, um, it was four or five years ago, when Tesco was in the news because it was squeezing their suppliers way too much and paying them after six months. So you provide goods to them, they pay you in six months, and they, this became all this uh, social responsibility issues, corporate social responsibility issue, it was in the news, and then they changed their uh, uh, terms. And now it is between two and three months credit period. So if you see all of the retailers, their, uh, their receivable ratios, which we will calculate later, will be between 60 to 90 days, which is quite usual. But retailers, their sales are cash. So these ratios are good. And this links with uh, some authors they bring, uh, they keep this ratio in the liquidity ratios. I don't, I think it's more important with the profitability ratios.